For okay, so we were talking about how you know I was raised with the mom who was like feminist rights and mm -hmm. do all this well, and that kind of thing. That. And so I, be, she really wanted us to become independent, and that's great, and we did to a certain degree. But then what that also did was it created um, that toughness, oh. almost like. Um, an armadillo kind of like has to, or, or a porcupine has those to, to, to the to turtle, all those shells, you know, all those analogies of shells. And so I've gradually started taking, looking and saying, you know what, if I, you know, there probably are guys who are interested, but they're not going to be able to get through like my firewall, you know, and then it's kind of like, I'm sitting going, well, then why, why aren't they approaching me? You know, well, so it we was went like out one time. We're sitting there, and I knew what state I was in, so I didn't want to attract guys. But I'm looking and thinking, do you know that you do this? And you're like, uh, I, I, no. no. And so then she's then, okay, I'm going to be more open. I'm going to smile more. I will be a little bit more flirty. And yet I go, no, that didn't change the energy. You're still giving off that same energy cord. It, it's the signature. It's what's sitting in the energy field. So mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, so... Look at this, look at this, look at this. And then and then I go out with one of my friends recently, and I there was actually a guy who was willing to say... Break through that wall. Break through that wall and say, do you know that you're coming off this way? And you stopped and uh, paused and said, oh man, I've heard that before. <laughs> because what was interesting was I was, I was actually... I was watching the guys go with my friend, oh, and yeah. I wasn't jealous, I was curious. Hmm, why is that happening? Yeah. Why is that happening? And I'm just... You know, constantly that spiritual observer, <laughs> and so even when I'm out, uh, you know, painting the um, town red with my <laughs> friends, um, still being that spiritual observer, and, and uh, but I was standing, and I and I, so I was watching what was going on, stood off to the side, and I was just watching. I was taking in the whole scene of um, what was going on. Yeah, watching. Her, watching her energy, you became the what was going on, who was reacting, and then that was when this guy came up and said, hey, do you know that you're com coming off this way? I said, no, that's not my intention. And then he broke through, and then we ended up sharing some drinks. And I'm going to find out about the fact that there's more to you. Right, and I told him, I said, that's not my intention whatsoever. And what's brilliant is you use the word intention. Because your true intention is you wanted to communicate, but because of the walls, it stopped it from happening. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what should listeners expect. I think we kind of covered that. We, we cover a whole range from healing tools to reading the quantum energy field, as well as talk about you can, whatever you can imagine, because I have learned to really learn. My, my history of what got me where here today was learning all the different facets. Uh, of different things and so it has helped me to um, to talk to masters to do what I need to do um, so as far as the interaction we love to interact and the more interact you get to see us come to life so if anybody wants a reading in the chat room go for it let me know and we will be glad to uh, talk to you if you want to call in and have a live interaction uh, our number from what I understand was 989-945 0287. We're going to get used to this calling in thing. We're not sure how it goes yet, but we'll get there. One step at a time. We've gotten this far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, where do we want to go with the show, the direction of the show? Very simply, wherever spirit tells me, because I, there's not a script for me, but I do know it's about healing, spirituality, spiritual practices. It has nothing to do with religion, please. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with becoming a spiritual human. I have learned to uh, be the catalog of life, learn from the catalog of life, and learning how to communicate on a relationship level with people, money, purpose, things, um, love, self-esteem. My whole life help you with is helping you understand that you have an identity and you don't have to identify with hell and it's making closure so that you can go into your self-esteem. There was a big thing. I asked you, I said, do you have the willpower to do something? And you goes, yes. And I said, do you have the self-esteem to do it? And you're like, uh, uh, wait for it. Yeah, <laughs> and I said there's a big difference because with with self esteem you have pathways that are there or not there. The willpower uh, is you know you have to ask yourself because the willpower gets pushed aside when the self talk overrides the soul talk. And I was sitting in my office and I said, oh I don't know if I really want to do it blah blah blah. And I said, wait a minute. So I asked my soul, soul, do you want to go do this? Yes. 
do you want to stay in the art? No. But then what the heck am I doing listening to this chatterbox that's in my head? It's probably, it's probably hooked up to the matrix of the group, group consciousness that women are supposed to bitch or something. I said, screw that! I got up and enjoyed myself. You know, so we, we, lose, we, we lose that voice and we, we, we don't realize it. Um, so my direction is to help people heal their hells, create a better heaven, which means resolve to evolve the soul, teach a soul language, I, to take all of our experience and history, give you everything, give you tools, give you information. Knowledge is what actually will help you learn to grow and to heal. We'll talk about death, we'll talk about how the process of death, we'll talk about um, you know what to expect on the other side. There's all kinds of areas. We talk about all kinds of healing, uh, using tools from pendulums to uh, cards to tarot deck to what is the difference between a medium reader, a uh, psychic reader, and you know, and so an extra large. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. There's a lot of humor. What else can you Why expect? Some humor. Yes. So the direction of the show is that you're, the more we grow, the more you're going to grow with us. And so I trust spirit that will give me the direction. Just like when I teach classes, I never know what it's going to be. Uh, and we're coming up on we'll take the that time. Break. <laughs> Not me. Well, yeah, real quick. Oh, gee. Okay, where do you see this show going? Well, I see it becoming real popular in the future. All right, that's good. All right, um, Jen, and what do you think, Sweet? <laughs> What's going on there? They said that um, they're scared of that stuff, so I said boo. Oh, good Lord, we're on a paranormal <laughs> channel and they're scared of this stuff? Scared of what? You haven't <laughs> seen me in action yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Okay, so you had asked, um, seeing the direction of this show. Right. So, not only am I a medicine woman, but as I have alluded to, I am ordained clergy through the Swedenborgian Church of North America. And so, ooh, that's even scarier, right? Uh, so, put, put thanks real quick. He said, okay. someone says, I love the show. I did read that much. Okay. Okay, so now you go ahead. Awesome song. Yeah, Swedenborg. Woo, woo. Okay, so, um... <laughs> Because you talk about healing the hells, resolve to evolve. So the whole thing, um, so who Emanuel Swedenborg was, was a scientist and theologian. So we fit in the realm of Christian mysticism. And his whole point is the idea of the sec all these people are waiting for the second coming of Christ. And guess it's what? Here. It's already here. Spoiler alert, it's happening Whoops. right now. Did you so, know it's all about the consciousness? Exactly. Anyway, let's go. Okay, so then... And so we start with the end of the Bible, with the book of Revelation, which is even the scariest part of it. Oh, yeah. I know, so this sweet <laughs> piece of cake. Okay, yeah, we'll start with the end that's really scary. This is, how, this is what everything's based on. So, mm -hmm. the idea of the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And so I've always joked, well, what does that look like? Is it going to be... And, and to think that it's like, oh, it's 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles, <laughs> like... Like coming squashes? Exactly! <laughs> and, and, and is it going to look like this spaceship from Independence Day? Oh my You know, God. like, you know, what point? Like, or, or all that other stuff. And it's like, no, that's all, just all the stuff that we've state been, of consciousness. The, um, the stigma that's been attached to different things. And it is a state of consciousness because it's a metaphor. Because it's already happening right now. The more that we link up our heart and mind center together, mm -hmm. that's how this idea of the New Jerusalem is evolving. And so that's what it means. And so the idea is to create um, heaven from the human race. The more that each of us takes responsibility for who we are, our purpose, what we're supposed to be doing on the planet, linking up our heart, our mind, and our intention, that is the second coming. That is heaven on earth. And that is the direction that I see this show going, is that we're helping people achieve that. And how, whatever language we need to speak, preferably English, um, <laughs> but, you know, hey, through I, science... Light language throws you off. Well, we talk too. about that we use science <laughs> and spirituality yes. um, to achieve this, because there is that link. And people have talked about, you know, the, the idea that the religion has to be separate from science and all that kind of thing. And guess what? Our theologian was a scientist than a theologian, and so it answers both of us. And he was, he came from a background where his mom's side of the family was interested in mining. So guess what that means? He's walking into a side of a mountain, looking at really old stuff, the glaciers and that kind of thing. Yeah, not really into the idea of creationism. So, <laughs> anyway. So here's a funny part about the, the revelations. Um, back in 1989, my mother had cancer, and so I 
was helping her out, and so I had lived in another place and two and a half hours away, so the only thing I brought with me every now and then was my Bible. So I said, okay, finally, I'm going to finally read this. So I crack it open, started from beginning to the end, and I thought, okay, didn't understand it. This is the most again. confusing book I've ever well, read. Well, I had it past time because it was like four years. I didn't want to move anything because my mother lived in a tiny house. I couldn't really bring anything. So then I read it the second time, and I'm thinking, oh, that's, that makes more a little bit more sense. And you quiz it in, you question, you contemplate, you do all these things. And then finally by the third time around, it's like I, I started to open it up, and I swear to God, the pages were blowing. And the next thing you know, it's like all man's uh, words and opinions, and the, the way it sculpted it to look like all the words flew away. And what was left was an interesting story about how we identify and how the energies... And then when we got to the Revelations, the 12 is actually the 12 meridians. What do they mean by 12 in the Revelations? There's all these different Well, there's the, tw there's the 12, there's the 12, because um, it's funny, we were talking about this earlier on our blog talk oh, show. That's <laughs> the why number it's so 12. There's um, the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob had um, Joseph and his brother. There were 12. There's um, the 12 plots of land within the Holy Land that was divided, and then there's the 12 disciples that follow Jesus. So it's, it's a significant number, and then they're talking about all these numbers, and the numbers aren't literal. I mean, they're no, divine they're numbers, but the right. idea of that 144,000 is... Well, you, that, see, now there's another... Okay, I did a lot of beautiful things I'd like to tell you. Let exactly. me just get back it up. The 12, one of the things is there's 12 meridians, 12 organs, 12 notes that play within ourselves, and these are the 12 things that I see. Now, when you want to go to 140,000, or here's the thing, when you have a soul group, there's, there, you know, we were all born at once as far as uh, the mirror image of that point of spirit, what they show me. And then there's the soul group, and then the soul group breaks off 12 branches. And then those, out of those soul uh, branches, break off 12 more, and if you add it up... And then they tell so many friends, and so on, and so on. <laughs> That's where the pyramids can keep them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was the song commercial in the 80s, and they tell two yeah. friends, and That's so on. That's true. And so but, on. But, the, but then there's all these significant soul groups, so when, like when you hear, oh, in 9-11, a soul group died off. It, particularly, it was one huge soul group that said, That's it. We're here to go. Bam. Let's... Uh, we can't be in the next vibration, so let's go. We left our mark. What do we want to leave? How do we want to change the, the way the group consciousness is in here? You know, what's the significance? I mean, it's all planned out so intrigued-wise by the soul and the soul group and about what they're going to do. And what's interesting is, oh, boy, my guys are saying, you should talk about how when we die, we pop in and out of dimensions. Okay, I'm not going to go there just not, yet. Not today. We'll get there sometime. Leave a message. Beep. Leave a message at the beat. Yeah, herd you guys up one at a time. So when Revelations, when I saw it, and it's talking about chakras, it's talking about energy pathways, it's talking about consciousness, I'm like, that's it? And when you really read the Bible, there's all these hidden messages, and if you allow the vibration to change, it turns into such a cool thing. But it depends on your belief system. It depends on whether you're coming from the energy of fear or you're coming from the energy of love. And it's like, then it comes from which mindset are you in? Because from the spiritual mindset versus the human mindset. Because in the human mindset, you can have love and fear being in the same spot. Sometimes you can't serve both masters and sometimes you can. It's intriguingly weaves in and out. Then there is the spiritual mindset that goes into another space. And when that occurs, and you are, become the observer. Now, there's a lot of things like uh, in, Inception. Uh, one of my, not that one. The Adjustment Barrel. Yes. There, there's the Watchers. And then Fringe, there's the Watchers. But we actually, if you go into the quantum physics field, we, each of us, are all observers. And if we are observing the wave of potential, and then we can turn it into a particle, then we don't see the rest of the wave. But sometimes we can have a wave and a particle be in the same space. And it all depends on where you are. When the wave was, was noticing that it was that it was being watched, it quickly behaved and goes do 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 do. <laughs> I'm I, just a particle. I'm just a particle. You don't see any of the rest of the stuff. And when it wasn't being watched, it turned back into a wave. And that to me always makes me laugh. And I think about how, with intention, our intention of how we're looking, we turn it into a particle. 